ultimately the decision to go with Conestoga was after really delving into it and doing my research, Conestoga offered the most comprehensive package that there was. Um, they're the only ones that included so much stuff. There were no other companies that I found that included <clears throat> the roof, uh, that included the flooring, that included wiring and stuff like that. You know, I'm sitting here in the kitchen area of the great room and that massive uh, section of windows is what's on the other side over there. And the view that I have, granted the house isn't done yet, but regardless, the view that I have here looking out and that faces west. Um, and my neighbor across the street has got a grove of these really big aspen trees. So in the fall, I've just got all this gold out the window. Um, right now we had, we had some as if we needed more. We had some, some more snow yesterday. So all the trees that are out there, I've got snow in them. It's just, just sitting here. It's just, it, it's a beautiful, and I knew, I didn't really know. I, I, I kind of picked out the lot, uh, you know, at the time that I went to Dallas, I had actually already kind of, I hadn't bought the lot yet, but I, I had, I had, I was honing in on it as well. And um, I was like, well, yeah, I'm going to have all these great views. And I did these windows again, they're over there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's an it's an amazing view. Mm. Oh, and at night we have dark skies here, so at night you turn the lights down inside. I, the the stars that I can see just out of the windows from inside the house it's amazing. Mm. <laughs> it's amazing. Could well, your you... pictures are always stunning. I mean, yeah. no, well, thank you. Just you know, yeah. I, I want to say postcard, but that's just too overused. I mean, they're just <laughs> so uh, true. So. Well, thank you very much. I, and th there's there's lots more. And I, as you know, I've been I have hours and hours and hours of time lapse of the of the construction of it. I don't have everything. There's sometimes that we miss some things, but I have a lot uh, that when I get done, I'll be sitting down in front of my computer and spending probably a couple of months doing some editing and getting some stuff out there to to share with people to see how what it looks like in in time lapse fashion mm -hmm. to to build a place like this. That's that'll be incredible. Agreed. Thanks. Agreed. Oh, so um, what was the customization? Uh, I'm, yeah, sorry. <laughs> what was the customization part of the design process like for you? Well, so you know, because obviously you were you were heavily involved in that. You were it, you were my source for that. So living here in in uh, in June Lake, California, which is in the Eastern Sierra Mountains, and I'm I'm at about seven thousand six hundred feet elevation. Um, the the area is volcanic. Uh, I'm in the Mammoth Lakes area, and um, because of that, uh, we have we're, the area is prone to earthquakes. So we have earthquakes. We've got seismic that has to be dealt with, and then we get a lot of wind up here because of the the way the mountains are. Uh, the, the wind comes through and it builds up speed. And then of course there's snow. We've gotten probably 15 feet of snow in town here, uh, this year, which is unprecedented, but still, um, so the, the house had, the kit had to be, uh, customized, uh, to be, uh, to address the, uh, the seismic, the wind and the snow loads. And that was the biggest that those were the, the really the main changes that had to be done to the basic kit. If I'd been doing this in Southern California, it probably wouldn't have had to do hardly anything at all it, because it, we didn't need all, all of the stuff that was needed here. Um, the, the one, what I more consider customization was um, originally in the master bedroom, which is in the loft upstairs, it had a sliding glass door in the Juliet balcony. And I felt like that that was more of a waste of space than anything else because you couldn't the balcony being so shallow it's not like you could set up a table and sit outside and enjoy it and mm -hmm. by having a sliding glass door it then also made it so that if i wanted to ultimately we we converted we, we i had you guys do me a big window instead which is mm -hmm. great because my heater is a baseboard heater that's underneath that window and had that door been there I would have had to done the heating somewhere else and that would have been a pain. So, but to answer your question, uh, I, 
the customization process was, you know, it was it was on par with uh, with what I would have expected. Um, I know that you had to do a lot of work working with California engineers and stuff like that, and there was a lot of back and forth. Um, but it, I mean, it, it, you know, it was this. I think it was as smooth as it could have been. So I don't have any complaints about it. the most rewarding part is knowing how because uh, I was part of the build crew from the get-go when I hired uh, the contractor I said hey is, you know will I be able to help out and as it turned out they actually relied on me as 20 percent of their crew and so being involved in the building of my house from from after the concrete was poured up uh, and now in particular, and the, again, the things that you can see in, in this shot, this is all stuff that I did. Um, I did have a neighbor that helped me uh, hang the, the, the cabinets, but all the shiplap on the walls and stuff that, you know, and this, the door that's back down here, down in the hallway and all what's around here. I didn't do the ceiling because I didn't, I was a little bit afraid of heights. So my contractor did uh, do the tongue and groove ceiling boards, but all of the shiplap throughout the house that's been done so far, and I've only got one room left that needs to be finished up. It's all stuff that I've done by myself. And that's been very rewarding and for me to sit here in this space and know that every piece of wood that's here, I had my hands on. I'm the one that nailed it to the wall. I'm the one that, you know, cut the links and so forth. That's very rewarding. It's been very enjoyable. That's great to hear. It is. I've put uh, that style of, of wall finish up as well. And it's nice because it goes relatively quickly you get to see the result for each piece that you're putting on yes. you know it's changing the dynamic of the room so right and, yeah, and, and certainly and watching that, to what you're saying watching that on the time lapses that i have done of that it's really cool to see go, you know, and go up so it's yeah it's really it's it's and it is it's super rewarding to to be able to be in this space and just like i said i didn't know that when when my family and friends ultimately come and spend time here with me for me to be able to go yeah I did all this is going to be really, really something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. With a lot of help from you, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was glad to do it. I <laughs> I appreciate when someone's standing on the job site with something in front of them. And even worse, if they have three guys standing there going, what do we do next? You know, yeah. you don't wanna <laughs> yeah. just put it away until you can reach someone. You want to try and get an answer and I, move it forward right then and there. So, yeah. Yeah, I can appreciate that for being in construction most of my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, what has been the uh, biggest challenge that you that you've gone through in this process? Probably the weather. We got started. We didn't actually start the construction phase. Not 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 including the foundation, but as far as the building of of the and you know my. My house sits, the Aspen Chalet, if people see it on your website, my house sits on a foundation that's a, a garage and shop. So it's up above all of that. And so here in June Lake, the, uh, the, the, the weather became the biggest, I think the biggest challenge because we got started later in the year than we should have. We should have started try to try to start building the end of May, beginning of June. But because of the timing of, of doing during the middle of a pandemic, you know, uh, and and then uh, all of the of the delays that that alone caused, we didn't actually get to start building the 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 structure until the middle of September. I think we started on September the twelfth or thirteenth, um, which was easily at least two two months later than we should have gotten started. And what wound up happening is then we start we started in the middle of September not more than a little bit a month after that we started getting our first snow uh and i was i was talking to julia a couple of days ago and telling her about i've got i've got some time lapses of me shoveling snow out of the great room or out of the bedroom the the the, the one that's up in the loft where we hadn't had a roof yet and we would had all this <laughs> snow and you couldn't just leave it there right uh -huh. so that that became a real challenge and then it, even after we got the structure on we, we had we lost a lot of time where There'd be so much snow that the crew couldn't come up because they were down they were down in Mammoth, a uh, half hour away from here, and sometimes the roads would be closed. 
But then finally, when they did get here, there we spent, if you add it all up, they probably spent mm, at least three or four full days just shoveling snow so that they could get to get to the property to be able to get inside and work. And so, yeah, that, yeah. that was the biggest challenge. Uh, did anything go easier than you expected? No. <laughs> Not a thing. <laughs> Maybe just that permit process that we talked about. We were all surprised. Yes, okay. The, the yeah. second round on the on the permit process. Yeah. That, yeah. The first round, that didn't, I mean, that took a long, long time, right? It, oh, I, think, I, I remember. Well, not only the work that, that we were doing to get to the point of, of then submitting it, but we submitted in July of 2020. And we didn't get our approval until right before Christmas. It was like four, four or five months. Mm -hmm. um, so that, yeah, that was a challenge <laughs> as well. And if I remember right, that had a bit to do with the pandemic too, because they, oh, every, yeah, they were outsourcing everything to a, to a building inspection firm. That was in Southern California, further south than where I moved up from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and they had their own problems. There was there was a point when uh, on the on when the when things were finally approved. I don't know if you remember this or not. They sent the plans to the county and was oops, we forgot to have our engineers stamp them. Oh, <laughs> and so, that, wow! And, and because of the timing of it, if I didn't do what I did, which is I I called them up and I said, "Can I?" bring you a copy i'll drive down to irvine which was, it was a <laughs> two hour drive to get down there and bring you a set so that you can stamp them that i can that i can you know we can get them sent correctly because otherwise it was going to be almost a week before because they had they had already shipped them they were on their way to mono county up in bridgeport but it was on a thursday they weren't mono county wasn't going to get them until probably monday and then mono county was going to have to send them back um, so to, to, you know, I came up with the plan. It's like, look, I'll drive. <laughs> yeah. Oh my I didn't tell you about that, Julia. No, <laughs> you didn't. No. <laughs> wow. It's just another, another piece of the puzzle for your story. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, construction's always a challenge, but yeah. you know, some of the items that he mentioned, I mean, the pandemic, the pandemic, the weather, yeah. you know, they all just, yeah interlock together to slow right. things down oh but yeah at least the end result it's right. yes yes and you know it's 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 coming together really really nicely i'm almost done with it you know so yeah so absolutely could you give us a little pan of your kitchen kind of sure. see your cabinets and how amazing they look so <laughs> This is one corner. That's where yeah. the rain microwave is at. There's my farmhouse sink. Um, sorry, there's some stuff just kind of sitting around here. And here's my refrigerator. Um, and that's where that's where we're still working on things back over in the corner. <laughs> but yeah, so and then so there's the, you know, dishwasher and and uh yeah, my butcher block countertops mm -hmm. that you can see there. Again, sorry, I got some stuff kind of sitting around. It's okay. So pretty. So pretty. Thank I know you. people really love the color. How did you land on the green color? If you mind me asking. Well, so the, that's another thing about the, the the model that I saw, which is the one that's on the website. Had a it was either like brown or maroon colored roof. And I remember when I when I asked Morgan, I don't have to have that color, do I? And she kind of laughed at me. She <laughs> goes, No, we've got a bunch of different stuff. I said, Can I have green? Yes, of course. So the roof is forest green and I wound up and you see this in some of the photos that I've sent Eric and I think actually some of the stuff that got posted on your Instagram account if you look closely you can see I did the trim around the windows on the outside of the house color matched to that forest green mm. I didn't want to have the cabinets quite that green because I felt like that might be overdoing it too much and it'd be too bright so I went to Home Depot uh to that's where i got the cabinets from these are thomasville cabinets that i purchased from home depot and um i was talking to the guy about the you know the color of the roof and how it was this forest green but i didn't really want to go with that and he showed me this palette which is i think they called it sage green so it's got a little bit 
it's not as bright uh, as, you know, as the forest green is. It's got almost, I think to make that color, it's got almost like a tinge of yellow in it that subdues it a little bit more. And it looked really great in the sample that they gave me, but when I took the first cabinets out of the box, because I've got all the kitchen and, oh, I didn't hear, let me show you one other thing real quick. There's, if I can get this right. Am I doing this? Um, I'm gonna get down here real quick. Oh, there, the my island, right? Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I meant to show you that before. Um, when I opened the boxes up and saw the full cabinets with uh, with that color, I was really, really very happy about it. So one thing I am gonna do, the door uh, is the, still the primer gray. I am gonna color match this and I'm gonna paint the inside of the front door that, that color as well. Uh, that'll pull everything together. Absolutely. I think so. Oh, that's great. I love that. Thanks. That is, yeah. That's awesome. I like the way the, the colored cabinets just pop so much on the natural wood. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the 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 one that I'd seen down in Dallas, theirs were wood. Um, and they were just a darker color, but they was it was still just wood. And I thought, you know, there's a lot of wood in here. It'll be nice to have something that that accents it. And I think you both know that I also have the vanities in my bathrooms. It's got the same cabinets, the same color. Uh -huh. With oh, butcher block beautiful. counters, like I did butcher block counters as well, so. Oh, nice. Yeah. And I think with all the trees that are around you and all the greenery that's there anyway, it's just, it yeah. feels it even more, so that's. Yeah, the out the window awesome. over there. <laughs> that's yeah. the kitchen window. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Gorgeous. Oh, that's well really here, gorgeous. as long as we're doing, that's the. Yes. A little bit. That's the that's all of my my big windows. And stuff, Beautiful. So. Thanks. Beautiful. Yes. Looks like you have a nice bright day today. Yeah, it didn't start off that way. We <laughs> it, it, there's a little bit of flurry still going on when I first mm -hmm. woke up, but that I mean it happens that way. Yesterday morning, uh, we had flurries first thing in the morning, and then I had to drive up to Gardnerville to get some firewood, and uh, when I when I drove out of the neighborhood I drove into blue skies and sunshine so and then when I got back it was snowing there. so yeah it's very it's a variety <laughs> <laughs> good so that's that's uh, it's a kind of a multi-part answer to that mm -hmm. so the, the way it came about was when I first was looking at, at the build um, I was talking to my real estate agent. I was saying, oh, yeah, I'll probably rent a house down in Bishop, which is, a, and I keep pointing because that's it's in that direction. Um, Bishop is about, about an hour uh, below us. It's uh, also, it's only at about 4,500 foot elevation. And I thought that I would probably, because I had a home in Southern California, I was going to, I sold that house. And I was thinking that I would rent a place in Bishop, you know, and uh, my real estate agent said, well, why would you do that? Why don't you just get a, an RV trailer because you're allowed to have an RV trailer on site and you can live in it that way. And then you'll have an RV trailer. You'll spend less money on buying a trailer probably than you will on rent. So I looked into that and sure enough, it was a great idea. And so it started off, it was a fun adventure, you know, and the, the goal was that I was going to live in that trailer for about six or seven months. Uh, that was almost two years ago. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, uh, it started off very, no problem. It's a, it, I got a decent sized trailer, not, not big, not, not tiny. Um, but had I realized how long I was going to do, how long I was going to wind up living in, in that trailer, I may have tried to figure something else out. Um, winter, I thought that I'd be in the house by the first winter. And this is now the second winter. Um, and I spent a lot of time shoveling snow off of the roof of the trailer, shoveling snow out in front of the doorway so that I could get in and out of it. That wasn't fun. That was very, that was just an, an unpleasant experience. And, and then because we, things got, you know, were, were slowed down by the delays and stuff like I told you about, um, the, the this winter came around and uh, it, I, I needed to get, I needed to get the trailer out of here because I felt certain it was going to wind up getting destroyed. And the only question was whether I was going to be in it 
or <laughs> outside of it when it got just hammered by the snow. And thank God I got it out of it when I did. Um, because where the trailer used to sit, there's about five feet of snow on the ground. Um, and I would have spent all of my time, I would have had no time to do anything other than clear snow off the trailer. Um, so we got it out. It got off the property right before Christmas. And <laughs> the day that I was moving my stuff out of the trailer and bring it into the house, I was coming up the internal stairs from outside, bringing stuff up. And I literally had, had tears in my eyes because mm -hmm. it's like, I tonight I'm going to sleep in my house for the first time. And that was, that was really something. I'm an emotional person anyway. Um, but that was, I mean, and I'm not exaggerating. I was, I wasn't blubbering crying, but there were, my eyes watered up and I was, I was just mm -hmm. every trip. And it took me several loads of things because I, I lived in that thing for a while. So I had a lot of stuff in it. And, uh, uh, it was, it was really something. And then, uh, I got, you know, I got the trailer out of here. Um, so I moved it, I moved into the house about two weeks before the trailer was actually gone. We, there was still plenty of snow and I, uh, we have great neighbors up here. And I had a guy that had a, uh, a bigger truck than mine, uh, that was required because there's still snow on the ground. We got snow before Thanksgiving and there's been snow here ever since. Um, and now here we are mid February. Um, but, um, so I, I was in that in, in here for a couple of weeks. And, and like I said, thank goodness I got the trailer out of here when I did, because I know it would have, it would have gotten hammered. So, so, and it's wonderful to be in the house. Uh, obviously it's still a lot of it's still construction zone and I'm not in the bedroom that I'm ultimately going to be in. I'm in the room that I'm using uh, that I'll, that'll be my study. Um, that's the room that I got mostly done first. Um, so, but yeah, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to be in here. Mm -hmm. I, I was anxious. I was anxious for Phil to get you know out of the trailer and into the house too. Yes, he was. The work, the work that you're doing now is the work that shows. So yes. you don't want to be under the gun when you're doing all your finish work. You want to be able to take. And I know from talking with Phil, you know he wants things right. He wants them yes. perfect, if we could use that word. And now yes. you have the time to do it because you're in your house. You're not worried about a C of O. You yes. know that was taken care of, and you could just. You know, if you get a little burnt out for an afternoon, you can take a break. So yeah, that's great. well, and of course, you know that I'm, I'm uh, technically I'm camping in the house right now because yes. I don't have I don't have my certificate yet. But the inspector here, you know, he's been very cool and he he knows that I'm camping. Um, mm -hmm. so, <laughs> but yeah, absolutely, you, and you're right. And and as far as the whole perfection thing goes, one thing I and I just want to because you kept you you caught my attention on something there. I have I do the best work that I can do. This is, and I, I know a lot more now than I did a year and a half ago. Um, even even on, on, on the installation of the shiplap, every day that I do more shiplap, I get better and better at it. But I, one of the things that I also know is that this is a cabin. This isn't a house in Beverly Hills. Uh, this isn't even a house in, in the neighborhood that I that I sold my other house. And it's it's a mountain cabin and it's it's got uh, some of the character to it of the whole thing of my being involved in building it. Some of the character is the, some of the imperfections that are here. And they're not things that I'm gonna point out to people, but mm -hmm. it's stuff where I can go, you know, yeah, I, was, I, was, I wasn't as good when I put the frame around that door as I was when I put it around that one. Now to the casual observer, no one else will know that but me. Um, but, but that's also part of the beauty of this style of a home because it doesn't have to be perfect. It needs to be good. <laughs> and I've, and I certainly strive for, for goodness, but yeah. So I just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> yeah. I, I like that you shared that because it also tells a story of your house, of the home. I, yeah. I think that you can sit around a table with your family at the end of the day when this is all said and done, mm -hmm. and you can talk about different points of the build because of those little things, those little details that you remember that that doesn't yeah. look like that because X or Y and right. it tells it, it adds to the story and not only to the character, but the story that you'll continue to tell about your captain. Yeah. I think that's really special too. Yeah. And, yeah. and and one of the other stories though, going back to what the original question was here is that I get to tell my grandchildren how grandpa survived the winter living in a trailer. In <laughs> <laughs> you will be hero grandpa. You will have, they will look up to you so much after that story. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to help.
<laughs> yes, yes, I'm sure of it. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be you'll be a legend. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be a legend to them. Yeah. Thanks um, for that. <laughs> yeah. So You included a Swedish tradition to the peak of your cabin kit home. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and why that was important to you? So my contractor, uh, his wife is of German descent and uh, they, uh, that's partly where the, the original thing came from. And he, one day he, uh, he shared a, a link on a story that's referred to as topping out where way back in, I think this started probably back in the 1800s. And it really started, I believe, like you said, it, it was a Swedish thing where, I don't know, I can't, I can't tell you exactly who or, or, or where, where it started as far as that goes. But the idea is that to appease the tree gods for all of the trees that, that were cut down, not only on the property itself, but for the materials for the home, um, they would do this thing called topping out where they would put, they would either take a, a small tree or a branch from a tree and they would attach it to the highest part of the house. Now they would, the tradition would have been to have done that as the last part of the build, but the peak of my roof from the outside is 33 and a half feet in the air. <laughs> um, and so we decided that rather than waiting and trying to hoist some, um, someone up there to do it afterwards, that the day that we hoisted the ridge beam up, we would go ahead and attach. And we took a branch from a tree on the property that was probably the base of the branch was probably about two and a half, three inches in diameter and took that and screwed it onto the front of, of the, of the ridge beam, which is a massive over a thousand pound piece of uh, laminated uh, Southern yellow pine and screwed it on there and, and hoisted it up. And it stayed up there until um, until they were doing the actual metal roof. And when they got over to that part is when they finally took it down. Um, but I don't know that it, I don't know if I appeased the tree gods or not, but it was cool. And it was a conversation thing. Um, I think again, you, uh, I know that I told you about it, Eric, and, and you could see it on some of those pictures that I sent you early on. You could see this tree branch screwed in front of the house. So, yeah, so that, that, but that's really, that's the why it was more, fun than anything else so after so that day at the end of the day to the the part of that tradition that we finished up with and i don't know if, if you knew about this or not julia was that then the contractor he brought a bottle of uh, of irish whiskey and uh and, and and some beer and we we did uh whiskey and beer shots that's part of you know the way you you finished that thing off so it was fun <laughs> But we did make it a point to not do the booze until after the end of the day. Then. <laughs> after you were down That's from smart. the 33 feet. Yeah. Right. 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 Want to be able to tell your kids the story, right? Correct. <laughs> and Correct. your grandkids, yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so what do you wish we, as Conestoga, would have included in the kit that we didn't? Um, you know, there's, there's not a lot, honestly. Um, I, I think that, uh, I think that one of the, the biggest things that we mused over is, um, the nails. Um, uh, I think that I, I do believe that Conestoga should, should change how they provide nails. I think that they should provide nails, but they should provide nails for people with nail guns instead of expecting at, at, at in this century, <laughs> people to put a house together with uh, with traditional hammer nails. Because had we done that, I don't know, we'd probably only be halfway uh, <laughs> what we got done. So I think it would have been, that. that's that's probably the biggest thing because I now have, you know, uh, a, a lifetime supply of boxes of nails downstairs in, in, my, uh, in my shop that uh, I'll never use. They'll be here well after I'm gone. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. That, that, that's probably the, 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 the one thing that I, I think would have been, it would have been better to at least have the question asked, how do you plan on doing this? Are you going to be using, you know, are you planning on using the hammer or are you planning on using a pneumatic? I think if, if we had been able to say, yes, we're going to, we're definitely not going to do traditional, you know, hammer nail. 
that's that would have been it. Everything else, though, I mean, so much stuff included. Like I said, that it's mo very comprehensive. All what's here, and m most people that I've told about everything that came with the kit were just completely surprised. So, mm -hmm. you mentioned your shop. That you have a shop. What? Yes. What do you plan? Do you plan to do anything special with the wood <laughs> or? <laughs> I hope so. So. Again, uh, you know, the footprint of the Aspen Chalet, it's 24 feet long and it's or 24 feet wide and 40 feet long front to back. Um, and we built the same footprint. A, I have a under under these big windows and under where I am. I've got a two car garage that's down there with individual garage doors. Um, and then the back half of that. Uh, I do woodworking as, as a hobby. I've got a lot of my own bedroom furniture that I made. I've made anything from small like jewelry boxes to bookshelves and, and stuff like that. So, you know, as far as, you know, appeasing the tree gods for the, for the trees that we cut down, we had to cut down nine or 10 trees, which was a lot more trees than I had, I had hoped we would have had to have cut cut down because I obviously living here in the mountains I love the trees but at the same time being a woodworker the trees are there you know you can you know use some of them so one thing in, in particular that I did was um all we had I had a couple of trees that the trunks were 18 19 inches in diameter at the base um and so when those trees were cut down I had them cut them into logs that were either eight or ten foot long and I wound up taking I think it was a total of about 17, uh, eight to 10 foot long logs down to, there's a lumber uh, mill that's down in Mammoth. There's a guy named Bob Drake, who is going to take all of that stuff. And this summer, we're going to mill it into boards. Um, and I plan on, I didn't, when I sold my house in, in Southern California, the only furniture that I kept was a sofa and a chair um, and the other pieces of furniture that I made out of basically a bedroom set that had a, a chest of drawers and a blanket chest and a nightstand. Those are the things that I kept. All of the other furniture that I had, I sold with the intention that I'm going to, I will be building some furniture here for the house. And I, I will use as much of the wood that came from the logs on the property as possible uh, so that I will have, so that the, that, that wood that was taken down will at least go to a good purpose and not turned into firewood so yeah so that's what i'm going to do with my shop that'll that's add exciting. to the story <laughs> yes it absolutely, will absolutely yeah. absolutely i love yes. that um okay so what has your experience been like with our customer support fantastic uh eric and i wow this is the first time we've seen each other live mm -hmm. um i i consider eric to be a very dear friend um, and that is 100% because of the level of support uh, and one-on-one -on -one that, I, that I got from Eric from the get-go. Um, and I know Eric will hopefully not, hopefully he doesn't remember at the beginning when, we were, when there were some, some challenges, I could be moody. <laughs> um, but Eric always, Eric never, ever once appeared to take any of my moodiness personally. He always just figured out how to press on. And, and, you know, as he, as he said, you know, he was always available. He gave me his cell phone number. I would call him when I knew he was either at lunch or he had already gone home for the day because here in California, obviously I'm three hours earlier than you guys are or later than you are earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm three hours difference. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, Eric has always been available. And if, if he wasn't, if, if he couldn't take the call and I'd leave him a message, he'd always call me back right away. And he has solved a number of, of just, either questions I had or where there was something that went wrong that needed to get fixed. He's, he's been fantastic for that. So um, I, I give the, uh, on a scale of one to 10, I, I give Eric a 15 uh, on his, on his support of, of me and my project. So. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. I, I think our whole team here, we like to kind of put ourselves in the customer's shoes yeah. So, you know, and, and building is stressful, you know, building, no matter what kind of house you're building, it's a stressful experience. So I know, didn't know that going into it, but I do, I do know that yeah. now. <laughs> there's some, you know, there's some moments where it's just like, ah, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. So you've been great, Eric. And I, 
I do look forward to, I know you and I have talked about at some point, you know, you getting to come out here to California. And I also, at some point, I actually would like to go back to Pennsylvania. I would love to see the facility there. That's definitely on my, on my list of, of to do things. So, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, you, you've been awesome. And I, I, and I was, I being very sincere, I, I consider you a dear friend and I'm, I'm glad that we've had a chance to work together. Yeah. I'm looking forward to getting out there too. I think it'll probably be late spring, maybe early summer that we're, that I'm out there. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. You're all, you will always have a, a, a welcome <laughs> spot here, Eric, anytime. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I, I'm not sure how your general customer base is, as far as the people that buy from you are most people, uh, planning on, on being directly involved. I know that the Kaufman's up in Washington, they are doing the, you know, Sarah and Ryan are doing most of the work themselves. I know that they hired a contractor to do their, their shingle roof. Um, and they've got a guy that seems to have some experience that's helped them with a lot of other stuff. But generally speaking, they're doing they're doing so much more than I than I was uh, that I've done um, because I hired a contractor. And I, it's, I I'd say that the probably the most important thing is if you're going to hire a contractor, make sure that you vet your contractor to make sure that they know or that they have previously put together kit homes, specifically log cabin homes, because it's different. Uh, granted, the interior the interior is very traditional construction with the framing and so forth. But the the log structure, even though um, the Conestoga provides really good instructions on how to put all that together, um, I think it's important that if you're going to have a contractor build your home for you, that there's somebody that has experience in building this style of home. I think that that's probably the the biggest thing. My my contractor did not, um, and that that proved some, some of the challenges was just them not really getting uh, some of that kind of stuff. Not, not, nothing detrimental to the project, but um, definitely uh, I should have, I probably should have done a little bit more research than I did uh, to make sure that, that, uh, that experience was there, but that, that's, that's probably the biggest thing. And also don't be of the delusion that it's going to happen quickly. <laughs> it takes time. It's just, you know, uh, I mean, my it's so funny because my brother, who uh, got his general contractor's license a long, long, long time ago to build his own home down in Southern California, he built a, a, a geodesic dome. Um, and he told me when I started with all this, you know, whatever whatever the, the time estimate is, you really need to double it. And um, and even, you know what, and, in hindsight, and I kept on, I was very resistant to that. I was like, no, no, it's going to, it's only going to be, it's only going to be, you know, uh, six or eight months and it's going to be done. Um, and that was, you know, a year and a half ago. Um, I think that uh, if I had listened to him, uh, that probably would have been, you know, my better bet. Because it's just, just know that, that of course, it's the goal to get things, you know, you say, okay, this is going to take this much time. Very rarely does anything take as much time as it should. There's been nothing on this build that has taken less time than what it was expected. Everything has taken, has either come in a little bit more or a whole lot more uh, than, than what it, uh, you know, I, I would have expected. And if, if I'd known that going into it, I think that probably would have saved me um, a lot of heartache um, because I, my expectations were, were not right. My expectations, which I set myself up for disappointment. I now am at the point where it's like, yeah, I'd like for that to take another month, but it'll probably take three. So <laughs> that's that's really the only thing I could say on that. Just to be mindful of the timeline. Yeah. And yeah. have flexibility. Yeah. Exactly. That's good. Exactly. That's good. Yeah. All right. But I, I can tell you you weren't you weren't any different than most people. You know, they look to the positive side. Yeah. And occasionally it happens. Yeah. Um, but there's only a few that stand out where where the planets aligned and you know you could just have the trades yeah. in there back to back to back and everything just rolled along and it it is a shame but the pandemic did change everything everything just a little more of a challenge though so. and I I do want to give 
kind of Stoker, this isn't something that this is just something I thought of based on that. I want to give Conestoga some some good credit and good kudos for of I never got we how do I want to say this? I know I, I can't I can't imagine that my my cabin didn't cost you guys more than what it was forecast to cost you when I when I bought it. But you guys never once said, well, sorry, Phil. And I granted, maybe I'm sure it's because of contracts and whatnot, but regardless, you never even tried to say, well, it's going to cost you more now because it's costing us more now. That never happened. Um, you also, even though I know there was all kinds of issues going on with uh, getting uh, issues with truck drivers and whatnot, I got no delay or pushback at all from you guys during the middle of all this to bring all, you know, two truckloads of stuff from Pennsylvania to California. You got it here when we when we wanted it here without ever once saying, well, we might have a delay. And I really think that 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 says a lot about your company's commitment to its customers. And that's and, you know, no one paid me to say that. I'm being very sincere. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again. And Thank you. I know this has been insightful for a lot of viewers and listeners who have probably had very similar questions that you had along the way. So thank you for sharing your story and um, being able to to help them out along the you way. Bet. So thank All you right. guys. All right. We'll Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.